this high disease index and low disease, disease index consumers. You can actually, you know, uh, you know, divide India into states, which are you know high disease index states and lo low disease index states, where it is there is more lifestyle di related diseases, right? So they have a very different set of consumption, especially when it comes to pharma products, as health products, etc. So those segmentations have definitely worked for us. Uh, and uh, you know, I will again just mention you know uh, uh, the other uh, other other is you know, uh, and when it comes to life, when it comes to uh, behavior, also the other thing is life stage, right? So you know whether you know they have just had a just had a baby, you know that you know so if they can target consumers, and I we know that you know how their product portfolio changes, right? So apart from the standard you know affluence led. Uh, segmentation. I think these behavior and life stage related segmentations have definitely worked for us. No, just to add on to what he said, I think when you talked about profitable growth segments, I think it's also important to perhaps look at and say, what are those new spaces, right? Because you are, uh, you need to identify the new spaces where you can find that chunk of consumers that you can profitably grow with. And I think there is behavioral, of course, which is, uh, you know, gives a very clear picture of, you know, dependent on, for example, like you said, you know, my behavior relating to health activities can predicate something that I would be doing. But I think there's also the whole different uh, dimensions that can one can bring in and they can be brought into multiple combinations. One, I think, is around the whole space of the needs, right? Because uh, we know that consumer is complex, needs are evolving. Uh, you could use needs as one way to look at uh, identifying those spaces. You can layer that with uh, behavior. You can layer that with, uh, you know, lifestyle. You can layer that with any other psychographic kind of uh, variables. And I think from what we've been doing, I think the focus on new spaces for brands, particularly which have reached high levels of penetration. You talked about, you know, 99% penetration. Now, in that, it could be about how do we drive more volume, more occasions, more... You know, that, so I think there's a multitude of variables, but it needs to start with what's your hypothesis on where your brand is and what do you think you need to be looking at from a growth, and then you can use the variables appropriately. Yeah, just adding on to that, actually, it's a brilliant thing. Once you've done your demographic and psychographic basics, it's it's very important to see where your source of growth is going to come, whether it'll be increased consumption or increase in penetration in some cases, like some of the brands who need, or new age brands that need. and that's the brilliance of digital data today. Uh, even if the first party data that we are using currently or you know, creating lookalikes, et cetera, help you get that segmentation in place. And there are open s data sources also where you link up your APIs and then you become more deterministic of the need gap. So for example, uh, we just did a campaign few, like few months back on for luminous inverters. It was, the, you know, it is a need-based thing when, when there is no electricity then. So we actually use a API that will help identify where there are power cuts only, and mobiles work when, you know, power cuts are happening, still mobile will work, so you get that messaging. We got brilliant results there. So open API is layered with all your static data that you've done, and the digital first-party data are actually helping you better segment today. Thanks, and, and I'm, I'm just adding a few between what uh, all three of you spoke about. Um, so we were looking at India Alpha, which is around roughly 1.8% uh, of India population. And uh, they um, are accounting for roughly 64,000 crore of FMCG um, buys. And it's around 50 million uh, today. Um, Golden, Goldman Sachs talks about this moving to around 100 million by 2027. Uh, so how do you identify this segment, this two crore, three crore audience? How do you identify them? They're growing at 12.5%. India population is growing at one. So um, how do you target these consumers? Now, these become interesting pieces uh, for us um, as marketeers as we, as we progress. Shifting gears, I think um, since we are on the topic of how to, how to identify, how to target, how to un understand trends among these consumers, et cetera, uh, cookie duplication is something that we have we have heard, we have spoken about a number of times. Uh, this also is translating into some form of um, issue with respect to how we can target going forward. Uh, the question is, uh, how are you observing? And and maybe um, maybe somebody from from Dabur or or uh, you, Jasmine or, or Amit, 
uh, Vivek, uh, you can talk about the fact that how are you gearing yourself as an organization to address this targeting issue with respect to uh, cookie deprecation? Because that's also a sharp targeting uh, process. Uh, even measurements are likely to suffer. Somewhere we actually think as marketeers that we are left in the lurch. Uh, you have a DPDP act, you have a cookie getting deprecated. Uh, all of these are happening parallelly. So how are you, um, and, and you touched upon first party data. So hinting on that point, um, how are you gearing yourself to address that? I, you know, I think uh, uh, most of the companies are working in the same direction, uh, getting your own stack of first party data and trying to create your own cohorts and try to collect as much data as possible. That's one thing, but you know, uh, that's like if you want to like super target a customer, like if you like really sharp target a customer. Uh, for brands like ours, which is like very, very mass brand, for us like 142 crore population is the target, you know, for most of the brands, especially, you know, Im imagine uh, categories which are 99% penetrated. So you basically, your source of business is uh, the market leader or your source of business is driving volume or your source of business would be say uh, eliminating the smaller players. So targeting those, uh, so that's what, uh, and like top of the funnel uh, targeting, that's one way which will continue for companies like ours, which are like uh, uh, in a mass uh, based uh, uh, business. However, uh, for sharp targeting, obviously you can't leave that. You can't leave the behavior based uh, targeting like what when I talked about, which uh, we have been focusing on and we have uh, looking at the behaviors of consumers, we have launched a lot of uh, products which are digital first, which are e-commerce first, uh, and uh, we've seen a lot of success in that as well. And uh, they've been working phenomenally well. So all these signals which you get uh, uh, from uh, getting the first party data, using that and uh, making cohorts and targeting the right people, uh, that's, that's the way forward. Uh, if, if there are any other uh, signs which will uh, come up in future, we'd love to know about that. and try to go after the consumers. So uh, yeah, apart from that, you know, apart, you know while, while of course first party data is there and you can, you know, develop lookalikes and then, you know, target the consumers accordingly, you know, as there, as, as the problem kind of comes in, you know, the uh, ecosystem also kind of has, uh, you know, built in solutions also. So, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I know that, you know, there are a lot of uh, companies who are working on um, you know uh, basically um, uh, in which consumer is de themselves giving permission right uh, they are getting onboarded on panels in which you know they are giving permissions for the uh, you know uh, for the agency or the you know uh, the, the the to kind of track the track their journey uh, so um, of course for incentives or whatever but you know there are a lot of you know we are giving permissions on apps etc similarly there are you know research partners who are also having these apps in which you know the consumer is giving permission and therefore you can actually develop lookalikes and you know you can be less dependent on cookies right and you know the, we are still still kind of experimenting with that and we don't know how it works but yeah when it comes to zero party data i think when it comes to zero party data what has become what one has seen is that indians are very very open to giving information you know <laughs> and this is like uh, yeah, till now, very open. Like if you ask one question, uh, what do you do? They'll tell you about their mother, their father, what they do, <laughs> what the children are doing, and what is their future plans, where they're going in the evening, et cetera, et cetera, you know? So uh, that way, Indian uh, uh, Indians are very easy to reach out to, as compared to, say, British, for example, you know? They will never give any information. They will never share any information. Or, say, Americans, uh, they come after British. But uh, so so that is that becomes, uh, again, very significant uh, step in uh, getting the data from people who are willing to give out the data and there are like plenty of them. So I'd like to add a little bit here because I think uh, in this current perspective, uh, the role of media becomes very important purely because the amount of data we hold from the various verticals we operate in. I think that's where, uh, you know, uh, taking from what Radiv said and Shubo said about growth, what is really happening is if you look at all categories, you'll see maybe the high end of real estate. You'll see premium ATA. You'll see, uh, for example, international holidays. Now, what's happened here is that it's not the ability to consume, but it's the propensity of consume that you know agencies and buyers now need from me. And there is no other way for me to deliver that unless I look at data. So when I look at data, now there are three problems that I have. Sometimes I have very little data. 
Sometimes I have too much data. And sometimes I have data in silos. So therefore, if I were to solve the problem for all of the gentlemen and ladies on the panel, what I really have to do is have a far deeper engagement with the consumer. So it just doesn't end at getting his email ID or his mobile number so that I have a single sign-on across all my properties and I have a full view of his journey. It goes much deeper. So I really need to know what is he actually reading? What is he actually consuming? It doesn't have to be said video is consumed on TV also, video is consumed on digital also, video is consumed on social also. But what is the context? What is he actually consuming? Because, I mean, what we've actually narrowed down to is that the best guess of what the consumer persona looks like comes from the fact to know if you know what he's actually consuming. Because, uh, you know, uh, a, a premium ATA doesn't really mean that he's high income household. He's got that tendency. Similarly, a gentleman who's perhaps looking at national politics may not be the same guy, and you cannot put him in the same segment as somebody who's just watching a semi revolution developing. And the fact that all of this is evolving so, so fast makes it more difficult for us, and therefore we need to keep a dynamic cohort and not a stable, static cohort for them, but dynamic cohort. You can see that the news items that used to last 15 days, a single news item would last you 15 days, but now what's happening is what you have in the morning is not what you play in prime time. So that's where the first party data and the fact that you actually understand the behavior of this consumer, the context in which he consumes the data, and whether he is also, so tomorrow I actually foresee a future where I will share this data without giving personal identity with Shuvadeep, with Rajiv, with each one of you, and see what is the overlap. When you have the overlap, you can actually nurture that rela relationship. So besides just having a CDP, you can actually have partnerships that go further. Maybe you know some of you don't have a vision outside the Kirana store. I have the vision outside the Kirana store. I don't have a vision inside the Kirana store. But if we were to bring that together, then we have an information network, which is a network of the future. Can I just add one thing? So, uh, so I think when you started the panel, Shubo, everybody talked about Gavot because that's something which I think, you know, across the industries that tends to be the challenge. But, you know, one of the interesting facts about Gavot is that we always focus a lot on the next quarter, or this quarter and next quarter. And that's where activation or growth that you can demonstrate within the next two, three months becomes critical. But there's also growth beyond the next quarter. And I, th I think India, everybody agrees that we are on the verge of, you know, getting into a golden decade or Amrit Kaal, or whichever way you call it. So I think there, uh, you know, the challenges are a bit different than just the challenges about how do I make the most out of the first party data. Because I, I like one of the points that Vivek talked about, that, you know, it's we are in a world where we always assume the consumer is a toothpaste consumer, automotive con consumer, all of that. But that's a human being you're talking to. And one of the dangers of over-reliance on first-party data is that you're creating these walled garden 